Hello, my name is James and I'm a graduate acoustician in the acoustics team at ACOM. Welcome to this short video of how sound travels underwater and its difference to how it travels in air. In this video, we'll run through an experiment you can do at home to hear how sound travels underwater and briefly talk about the results of what you could hear and why. Firstly, we'll talk about the experiment you can do at home and then we'll discuss the findings together. The experiment is better to do outside as it will involve water. In order to perform an experiment, you will need an empty plastic soft drink bottle and a large bowl filled with water. The bigger, the better. Firstly, you want to take the plastic cap off the bottle like this. Now, ask your parent or guardian to get a pair of scissors. Ask them to cut the bottom of the plastic bottle like I have done here. You want to do this just below the bottom of the label. Place your bowl at waist height if possible. Use a collapsible table like I have here if you can. Before doing anything else, hit the spoons together in the air and listen to the sound. When you do this experiment with the bottle, you'll be hitting them underwater, like this. Now, put the bottle cut side down into the bowl of water, and put your ear up against the cap end, like this. Ask whoever is doing the experiment with you to gently tap the spoons together in the water. Now, swap with your experiment partner and let them see what they hear. Discuss between you what the difference was. This experiment can also be done without the bottle, but we're putting one side of your head into the water bucket so that your ear is covered and listening this way. This experiment can also be done in the bathtub or swimming pool. However, rather than using a water bottle, lie back and put your head in the water until your ears are covered. Now ask someone to hit the spoons and what can you hear? Compare this with your head out of the water and hitting the spoons in the air. What you're hearing is the sound travelling through the water, hitting the plastic bottle, causing it to vibrate, which then causes the air in the bottle to vibrate, which you can hear. So, you probably came to the conclusion that the sound of the spoons hitting each other in the water is loud and clear. This is because sound travels through water faster than it does in air. And yes, if you didn't know, sound does travel through water and solids. Sound travels about five times faster in water than air. This should make the sound appear louder. This is because water is denser than air. You may already know this from science lessons at school and know of this diagram. Being denser means there are more molecules which will more easily bump into each other. Sound in air quickly becomes quieter the further you get from the source which in this example is the spoons hitting each other because it loses its energy quicker. However, sound in water keeps its energy longer because these molecules carry the sound better. Therefore, you hear the spoons hitting each other as loud and clear. Many animals in the ocean use sound to communicate. The sound of a humpback whale, for example, can travel thousands of miles as the sound keeps its energy for long distances. Another easy example to show how the dense object carries sound energy further is the use of a table. I'm sure many of you at school would have put your ear onto the table and tapped the table. The sound once again appears loud and clear. Move your hand close and far away and do it again. Does it sound the same? As the table is a solid, it transmits sounds even better than water because the molecules are even more densely packed. Sound in wood, for example, travels 12 times faster than air. Thank you for watching this short video on how sound travels through water and its difference to air. I hope you enjoy the experiment if you do it at home, which I think you really should. And I've learned how sound travels differently when in water to air. Goodbye.